Can you beat Final Fantasy X using only Seymour? Well, considering you get to play as him for just one fight, and then you have to defeat him four separate times in the game, the answer should be pretty obvious, shouldn't it? But what if we mod him into the party so we can use him throughout the game? game. He has no unique sphere grid, no unique gear, and the game will probably crash a lot. But let's see if his dreams of defeating Sin is actually possible, shall we? Firstly though, we need some rules for this run. Rule 1. Only Seymour can be used in battle. FF10 will also automatically revive characters after every fight. Before I can attack a mob, I must kill the other two party members off. If I just leave them alive, they can soak up hits from the enemy. The exception to this rule is when Seymour is not available, such as underwater, the Ronso fight on Gagazette, and the summoner battle with Isaru. Rule 2. No items. This is pretty self-explanatory, really. In battles, I'm not allowed to use the item command, including steal and use, with one very particular exception, which you will find out later in this run. Rule 3. Once we get to specific Seymour boss fights, the abilities he can use in those fights, we become allowed to use. For example, Cross Cleave is allowed after the Gagazette boss fight with him. And finally, rule number four, no customize. And that pretty much covers it for this run. I have no idea what abilities or options we're going to get with Seymour, so I can't come up with too many rules to block me with, as like always, I'm writing this script as I go. And I'm also going to shoehorn in this shameless plug as well. Did you know you can get early access to videos by becoming a Patreon? Not only that, you can also get tons and tons of other benefits as well. Help support the channel and find a tier that works for you by clicking the Patreon link down below in the description. Or you can find it on my link tree. Now... Let's start, shall we? And it all begins with you getting comfy right after dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. Firstly, we control some random blondie. We'll call him subscribe because that's absolutely what you should be doing right now. Currently, however, we have no way of getting Seymour into the party during this tutorial section in Xanakand. So, we rush through. I know you're thinking this goes against the rules of Seymour only, but there is n really nothing we can do during the Xanakin section as we have no access to the menu. Don't worry, our blue-headed protagonist is coming. Also, I should probably mention how we get Seymour into the game. We're using the Farplane mod in conjunction with the Sin Unleashed mod. You can also play as Seymour just using FFXED to head it in. in. However, that does cause a bunch of problems, so I would suggest using the two methods that I am using here if you want to try this yourself. Once we get to Barge Temple, however, he is in the party and as you can see he has some interesting stats and equipment no idea if we can actually use the sphere grid or change his equipment or not so hopefully we can or this is going to be a lot harder than i thought now sadly seymour is impossible to use underwater however as i said earlier in the rules we can still continue as water fights are mandatory to progress and are forced fights Later on, though, we can actually ignore pretty much all water sections minus one. So this will be one of the last few times we're forced to fight without Seymour. So onto the water ruins and we finally get to control Seymour. He's just not really visible, it seems. So we kill off Rico and Tidus with him and then murder the fishies is what I would like to say. However, as you can see, using Seymour underwater just crashes the game. Luckily enough, 99% of all underwater sections in the game can be skipped, as I mentioned earlier. So, we'll continue on to when Seymour is actually usable, which is at the start of Killica. The reason for this is any time the game forces a character change in the party, it actually removes Seymour from the party entirely. 
once we're in Kilikawa, that pretty much never happens again. So, we can finally begin the challenge in earnest now, starting with Ochu Lord. First thing is first, I need to murder Yuna and Tidus, but I get poisoned, which freaking sucks, because I can't cleanse it. So, have to fight the poison damage with a cure. Now though, I'm going to avoid using save spots as much as possible, as that would heal Tidus and Yuna, making it harder to kill them off. So most healing now will be done with cure or cure in the menu. Also, save points do not heal Seymour. I don't know why, they just don't. I also won't be using the sphere levels for a long time now, as Seymour's base stats are pretty strong already. Also, with Seymour, his sphere level never actually increases. This means he will always only need a few EXP to get a sphere level. It never really gets harder throughout the game to level him up like other characters do. Now, next we're on to Sin Spawn Geno. Once again, kill Tyrannus and Yuna, and then I focus on the tentacles first. Seymour has never been so happy getting to kill Tyrannus so much, but everything gets burned down to the ground with fire and magic. Now, on to Luca, where we have to fight the Extractor. But of course, we got the jerk shot before that, just because we can. Now, for Extractor, you guessed it, Seymour is removed. Thankfully, this is one of the last few times this happens, so kill the Extractor and move on. Now, in Luca, we see Seymour summon Anima. So because of this, we now naturally gain the ability to do this with him as well. We just have to do it a little differently by using a unique item called Summon. I know I said no items. This is the only way we can use this unique move though. All other normal items in the game are banned. Now you might think this is going to make the run super easy and a joke. While Anima isn't actually that great right now, and in fact Seymour himself is stronger than Anima, even more so when we actually use his sphere levels. Just look, Anima can't even hit the flying eyeball in Mihen. Anywho, next is Chocobo Eater. We kill off Titus and Yuna again and then spam up Fire Magic. I even use Requiem with Seymour, his overdrive. However, as it's only really programmed to be used on Sinsborn Gui, the animation messes up big time. But ultimately, I don't need it to heal, and he goes down pretty quickly. But we're now approaching the point of where Seymour is normally used, and as such, he's not that overpowered anymore compared to Kilika, and pretty soon he's going to be underpowered. And this is really shown when in the first Sinsborn Gui fight, we actually game over with Seymour, taking a massive 600 damage each turn. And because I need to kill Yuna and Tidus off before he can do anything, I couldn't even heal him. And then we get the exact same thing in the next fight. So it's time to use a few of his sphere levels, I think. And with the extra health and evasion we gain, we're able to just about survive. We also got lucky and that Gui's first strong attack goes for Tidus. Once Tidus and Yuna are dead, we heal up and then start working our way through with fire magic. Once I kill one arm, I then use Requiem just to kill the other arm and deal damage to the head. Another fire on the head to kill off and then starts the dance of healing and casting fire. Killing the arms whenever they regenerate takes a little time but he does eventually go down for us and we get to move on to the second Gui fight. Only Seymour only has 800 health left and I need to kill Orin and Yuna off now before I can even heal. Lucky for me, this version is actually much weaker, allowing me to kill Orin off in one hit, Yuna kills herself, and then Gui only hits me for a hundred damage. A Requiem then takes out the arms and head, and a few more fires finish the boss off. Extractor is forced Tidus and Walker only, so we just attack our way to a win. Now, we have a bit of a boss rush coming up, and I can honestly say I am a little worried about it. We have to do Sphere Morph, 
the Anti-Magic Machina, Seymour, and Anima, followed by the Yeti. This is not going to be a fun little time. So, I do a little grinding in the forest to get some extra levels for Seymour, and finally pick up some new abilities for him. Since he starts at Kimari's grid on the Sin Unleashed mod, we're going to go into everybody else's grid pretty much, since we have access to Yunas, Walkers, Lulus, Tidacys, and Rikus. At this point, I might have gone a little overboard, since even on Sphere Morph, I do 1,500 damage with normal attacks, and a Fundara did 9,999, because Sphere was weak to it at the time. Honestly, that's not too crazy though. It just means I should be okay for Everay, and we shouldn't have to do any grinding at Baval, and we can just move straight on. Hopefully, Seymour is massively stronger than my own anima now as well. However, I will need to try and one-shot the anima boss coming up, given he has insta-death, so if he pains me, game over. So, Crawler goes down in two hits, though, with a Requiem to kill the magic blocker, and then two Fundaras to finish the main unit off. Then we have my worst nightmare, Seymour and Anima. As you can see, Seymour and the Guado go down easily, but then Anima proceeds to one-shot me constantly. I tried a bunch of times, hoping for a different pattern, or to get two turns on Anima, but it just wouldn't happen. Instead, I am forced to resort to using my own Anima. It's the only way I can survive through pain. Fun fact though, if you use Anima and Seymour tries to cast magic, it crashes the game! For those wondering, by the way, this is easily over the 500 crash mark now. Playing as Seymour is so buggy, it's unreal. I think that deserves a like and a comment, right? Come on, you know you want to. Also, you can't use Anima's Overdrive. That crashes the game as well. I try another fix, though, of getting Yuna to summon Anima instead. Kind of goes against the rules of Seymour only, I know. I just want to see if the game is crashing because there are two Seymours on screen and Anima has the same stats regardless. But of course, it crashed anyway. At this point, I'm left with one option outspeed it, which means I need a ton of speed stat. Eventually, though, I manage it. It took me completing all of Tidus's grid and a big chunk of Riku's to get enough agility with haste to get enough turns in to murder Anima before it could one-shot me. I wish I could say it's going to be smooth sailing now, but I can't. The next boss, yes, he should be okay, but Everett is going to be a nightmare without stoneproof and without the ability to use items, given its massive HP pool and high damage combined with status effects. Yet he goes down pretty easily, and then we get to Every. Since I move over the orange grid, Seymour is now pumping out max damage with his melee hits, but something weird happens. He uses Stone Breath on me, which has the symbol of working, but doesn't actually petrify me. And I can't remember if that's a miss, or if a miss also doesn't show the animation of the attack. Either way, a few hits later, and it goes down. Now we have potentially the hardest fight in the game, though. Or, at least that's what I thought until Seymour spawned in the fight, which took me by surprise. I am talking about Every Atlanta. So, I just throw two Kurigas out to kill it quickly. I know I didn't kill off Tidus and Walker in the fight. The reason I didn't do that is because I didn't want to risk the game crashing with Seymour being underwater again. That's also why I just used the No Encounter booster to get out of the water afterwards. Next, though, is Baval Highbridge, and Seymour fights himself. This really brings to life the whole stop hitting yourself joke. I do panic though when I see Shattering Claw. 
But thankfully, it misses. Honestly, this fight would be so much harder if I didn't have to outspeed Animus so badly earlier on. And I know I said after we kill each Seymour, we can allow ourselves to use his abilities. Well, I changed my mind. We're already pretty strong. So if we added in some of his transformation attacks, then things would get way too easy. So I'm going to keep myself limited to just the sphere grid stuff. Defender X has me curious with its gravity based attacks, but a single Kyoriga is all that's really needed to help me survive through the onslaught thanks to my fast speed. Now it's time for Seymour to slap himself silly again. But again, Anima Opinus in shoes. I'm currently immune to zombie, which is bad for you in Alaska. I just can't understand why. The only thing I can think of is I have Seymour boss immunities, maybe? I'm not going to question it at this point, though. So we'll just have to see what happens. Sanctuary Keeper goes down nice and easy. But Spectral Keeper I'm worried about because of Berserk and Glyph Mines. Two things which can ruin me here. I start off with, of course, murdering my allies to get practice in for when I become Sin. Then I find out I'm apparently immune to Berserk as well. And now I'm just curious what else I'm immune to. Anybody who has played with Seymour before want to let me know? Anywho, a few attacks later and Glyph Mines come out. Thankfully, not under me, which means we're safe. Otherwise, Seymour would die instantly. But two more attacks and the boss is dead. Now for Unalaska, who can insta-death me, sap my MP, blind me, and pretty much do everything else to me that she wants to. I mean, come on, just look at her. She can step on me any day. But of course, since I'm immune to zombie, Megadeth murders me. I knew it would, but, you know, tried it for science and everything else I seem to be immune to. Guess I gotta try Anima. But of course, because I've not really leveled Yuna, Anima is still horribly weak and dies too soon, meaning I die to Megadeth again. But it's okay, I have an idea. Using some of the level 4 keys we got previously, I get auto life and use that. It does indeed revive me through the mega deaths, including Unalaska's last ditch effort to murder me when she has just 6 HP left. Seriously, how on earth does she have the energy to still cast that with just 6 HP? Every bone and organ in her body should be completely shattered at that point point. Anyway, as for Sin's arms, I do a quick fire just to make sure I can actually hit it without making Titus move the ship closer, and I can. So, I kill off Titus for the 6 millionth time and proceed to burn Sin alive, quite literally, for both arms. For his head, I kill off the others and haste myself, then use a fire while he's still out of range before he pulls me in closer one more time, allowing me to spam quick hits to murder him with a gain. Seymour then proceeds to kill Titus, Yuna, and Seymour. Yeah, I know. Insert bad joke about beating himself up, but hey, he's dead for good now. Well, other than us controlling him. Look, I, I don't know. I'm confused and my brain hurts from trying to think up some horrible pun for this, okay? Now, we're on to the last stretch. I'm just so sad and disappointed we had to massively overgrind for anima, resulting in the rest of the game being so easy. But then disaster strikes! I cannot get Seymour to appear in the Broska final Aeon fight. I have tried everything to get him in there. He is just constantly removed at the cutscene just before the fight. And once the fight has started, I can't force him into the party. So, next best thing. We use Seymour's summon. Anima. Look, I know it's a crapshoot and it massively bends the rule for only using Seymour, but hey, we came this far, we might as well finish it. So I spend all of Yuna's saved up sphere levels, which massively inflates Anima to a god of destruction, and Broska's final Aeon goes down in three hits, as you would expect. What's really annoying, though, is Seymour is back 
for the Dark Aeons and Yu Yavin fights. And since everybody has Perma Auto Life, all I can do is defend with everybody bar Seymour, but it doesn't matter. It's impossible for us to lose now. So I get him to bash the Aeons and finally crush the spider. So can you beat Final Fantasy X using only Seymour? No! We've had to bend the rules way too many times to make it work as far as I'm concerned. Not to mention, the game crashes constantly to the point I would honestly actually suggest never even trying to use Seymour. So, with that said, I leave you all with a question. Well, before the question, I'm going to tell you all to like and subscribe because shameless plug and all that and it helps me out so why not also link tree in the description go follow my socials now for the question what video do you think is coming out next friday i'll see you then everybody